Hello everyone, you're listening to the Socially Desi Show, the podcast that motivates you to live, create and inspire. If this is your first time here, welcome. On our show, we discuss tips and strategies with our guest speakers on how to tackle problems related to personal growth, mental health, relationships, business and entrepreneurship and health and fitness. So hit that subscribe button and go check out our website at sociallydesi.com for more of such content. Today I'm joined by Mr. Arpit Jain. He's the founder and CEO of Greedy Game. Greedy Game is India's leading mobile first native ads platform that helps app and game publishers monetize better with native ad formats and help acquire genuine users globally. Hello Arpit, welcome to the show. Hi Anurag, thanks a lot for having me here. The pleasure is all mine Arpit. Thank you so much for doing this with the Socially Desi show. And before we begin today's episode, I would love to know about your professional journey so far and what led you to start Greedy Game. Sure, Anurag. So uh, basically, if I tell you a little bit about, uh, you know, from the time I graduated. Uh, so I was an IIT Roper. I graduated in 2012. And around uh, the fourth year, uh, I, I was actually involved in quite a few of, uh, you know, the college level uh, groups, uh, societies, etc. I also mm-hmm. founded a, a society called Inactus there at okay. IIT Roper which is like a social entrepreneurship group. Uh, We had a group of 40 people who joined that. And we were actually running some social uh, entrepreneurship ideas uh, within the nearby communities of our college and and trying to, you know, make some business uh, for these local communities who might have less access to, you know, either information or, or, you know, uh, connections in in the business world. So Mm -hmm. so that was how it started. And uh, I started enjoying that uh, a lot. In the, in the fourth year and you know I started kind of delving into certain ideas uh, which which you know I can take forward in, in the form of uh, of an entrepreneurial journey for me uh, mm-hmm. so I at that point of time was uh, kind of uh, very very uh, impressed by the scale and the uh, and the engagement that you know mobile devices especially mobile games uh, mm-hmm. uh, bring uh, were bringing onto the table both uh, in my college as well as outside. Uh, after I graduated from IIT Roper, I was uh, I I actually got into PayPal as a software developer. Uh, okay. I was there in the R and D department uh, of PayPal, uh, and I worked on certain ideas there. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, like I said, uh, the entrepreneurship bug was always there, and I always wanted to you know do something of my own. Uh, so after a year's time, uh, after you know g- getting some experience there. Uh, on Mm-hmm. on how to how to develop software and, and essentially you know what kind of practices are there in a, in a big company uh, i actually uh, founded greedy game uh, okay. along along with uh, one of my college uh, mates uh, in Arink Varma, uh, who was a year junior to me from in college. Uh, and then both of us uh, started it uh, almost uh, 2013, end of the year. And I have been running the company since the last uh, almost eight and a half years. Uh, I work on uh, various aspects of the company very, very closely, which includes mm-hmm. uh, sales, marketing, uh, business development, uh, product, uh, finance, uh, and then HR and admin. Uh, uh, so, I mean, it goes from, you know, the, the top uh, <laughs> end level to end. end to end. Uh, yeah. And I guess that's what that's what's required to actually, you know, get the company ground up running uh, uh, in the ecosystem and then gradually growing it. So that has been my journey so far. No, absolutely. I agree with that. And are you a gamer as well? Because GG is a very widely used term in the gaming community. Yeah, of course. So, uh, like I said, during the last year of the college, uh, you know, technology uh, and and mobile games uh, actually were very very relevant uh, for us. Mm. Uh, mm. And uh, I I you I still remember, you know, uh, in in the le- college lectures, uh, generally uh, at least fifty percent of the of the of the students were just uh, you know playing uh, games on mobile, and, and the only the fifty uh, percent were actually listening. Uh, and I also uh, remember uh, vividly that you know a lot of times uh, uh, my my friends used to complain that you know there are so many ads which are coming up mm-hmm. while playing the game, uh, and, and they a lot of times they just switched off the internet. Uh, while playing so that they don't have to encounter those ads uh, yeah. and that was actually uh, something which uh, which you know uh, which we thought of as an opportunity uh, mm-hmm. and that's essentially how uh, you know greedy game came into uh, being so uh, the whole uh, 
uh, in app ads and monetization space has really evolved in the last 8 years ever since you started greedy game so right. can you tell me what is the present landscape of uh, the in app ads monetizations how do people purchase what is the current landscape correct correct sure so uh, i would say the the real uh, kind of boom started in the overall uh, mobile uh, industry by when the iphone got launched in 2007 and mm. a lot of uh, small developers who were developing websites or you know web 1.0 projects at that point of time they started coming into the mobile app space and, and you started seeing apps for you know everything which was earlier on a website uh, now had an app so that's yep. how uh, you know people started coming on the on the app ecosystem uh, what we what we have seen obviously by working with you know th- with thousands of of apps and games is that uh gradually uh you know uh, the whole uh, uh, revenue generation is kind of getting divided into two categories uh, very very mm. broadly uh, so if you are an app developer and you release an app or a, or a game on the play store uh, there are broadly two ways in which you can make money off it so the the first way and and the widely used way is actually having uh, ad revenues or advertising within right. your apps and games so uh, and that has been a uh, a uh, uh, you know a very traditional way of earning money uh, in fact a lot of websites uh, also use that and even if you look at the big social media companies like facebook and google to a certain extent uh, most of their revenues come from ads as well so so that right. is uh, you know one part in which you can actually monetize your apps uh, mm. because end of the day if you if you you cannot actually sell an app on the play store there are less than 1% of the apps which are actually sold for some yep. money in return uh, mm-hmm. most of the apps are free to use right so one way is uh, you actually have advertising on your apps and your users watch those ads or engage with those ads and you earn money uh, the other way which has actually uh, uh, gradually uh, started uh, becoming bigger is in app purchases where yep. you offer some virtual goods uh, within your app uh, or within your game uh, which the user can actually buy uh, and and pay you for it uh, mm-hmm. and these virtual goods can be uh, in a gaming scenario it can be extra lives or you know opening or unlocking a new level or let's yep. say you know buying some uh, currency within the game or buying some uh, clothes within the game which is which are yep. virtual clothes uh, but you, mm-hmm. you you just want to buy them uh, or if if you talk about a non gaming uh, scenario it could be a subscription uh, of of a service or or you know some extra content uh, like most of the uh, news apps would do uh, so so that is the other model which is started becoming uh, you know uh, pick, mm-hmm. picking up pace uh essentially because uh to do uh, any purchase on on phone you obviously need the whole uh you know banking infrastructure there you need credit cards to be there you need people to be comfortable uh with paying money online so that has right. gradually uh, started uh, coming to the picture and mm-hmm. uh, i would say currently advertising probably would contribute around 60 65% of the overall app revenues uh, and the other mm-hmm. uh, 30 35% is is contributed by in app purchases Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the biggest example is Supercell, uh, yeah. which has uh, so many million dollar games on the Play Store, and uh, it's free to use, free to play. But then, then you have so many in-app purchases uh, that you can do through which they are making millions of dollars mm-hmm. annually. So I think Correct. that's one one great example. Uh, again, uh, I wanted to uh, touch base on the fact that uh, the current landscape is slowly changing with now uh, Facebook rebranding to Meta, and then. talking about metaverse you yeah. know and uh, they have already spent uh, 10 billion dollars on the metaverse in 2021 and they yeah. plan to make this a, a huge deal in the next 3 to 5 years uh, and of course you know people who are uh, joining us and uh, don't know what metaverse is will put the links in the show notes below definitely go check out but metaverse uh, in a nutshell is a network of uh, 3d virtual worlds that are more focused on social connections and of course you'll have games you'll have apps you'll have different elements of what you already see right now in 2022 but yeah. in a in a very different augmented or in a virtual reality scenario so i wanted right. to ask you uh, arpit when it comes to uh, these services that we just spoke of we spoke mm-hmm. of the uh, advertisements and we spoke of the in app purchases right how will these services really change in the whole metaverse virtual world 
Right, right, right. So that's a very good question. And uh, Metaverse is a very, very interesting topic these days. Uh, like mm. you mentioned, a lot of funding has been going into it. Uh, Facebook has rebranded itself to Meta uh, just to make sure that people understand the seriousness of, you know, what they want to achieve. Uh, yep. So, I mean, just before, you know, answering that question specifically about ads and IAPs, uh, just want to kind of, uh, you know, make a, a more easier picture for everyone to understand Metaverse, uh, at least what we know about it right now, mm-hmm. right? So, like you mentioned, it's a network of, uh, you know, 3D worlds um, and uh, it is connected by, you know, social identities. So, essentially, yep. uh, if you if you kind of compare it with the current scenario, uh, let's say, you know, we have Facebook, Facebook as a platform and Twitter as another platform. Uh, mm. We are interacting with you know people on Facebook and then we are interacting with people on Twitter. Uh, what if we can kind of go from Facebook to Twitter, uh, having the same uh, you know identity and taking all the data from Facebook to Twitter and uh, you know uh, interacting with with Twitter folks and similarly yep. you know if Twitter people can come back to Facebook. Uh, so so that is how it is connected connected socially or it, it would be connected socially uh, with mm-hmm. you having one identity and you can experience different worlds created by different private companies as well as governments. Uh, and the other uh, part of it is, uh, you know, 3D worlds. So so in, in, in our current scenario uh, at, with the mobile device, whatever we are experiencing end of the day, it's, it's a 2D image uh, of, of the experience. Right. right. So, so when we talk about uh, metaverse, uh, a bigger kind of a focus is on having to experience experience it in a complete three D scenario where you mm-hmm. your you or your avatar can be present in that world and and can interact uh, with other three D avatars. So right. even though like you are chatting with someone on Facebook, it would look like you are actually talking to him in a metaverse scenario. So so essentially we can kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, look it at as a kind of an extension of the social media uh, that we mm. currently have, right? Mm. Now, uh, obviously, it's a, it's a new platform and, uh, you know, it, it would be a different platform for app developers, from for advertisers, because it would have its own uh, user experience uh, standards. It, w- it would have its own, uh, you know, content, uh, which can yep. be presented to users and opportunities, right? So if mm. we talk about uh, specifically monetization uh, for apps, uh, mm-hmm. like, I, like I said, there are essentially two ways to do it. So let's talk about ads, right? Yep. So in a in a current scenario, when you when you look at ads on on any apps or games, uh, apps like Facebook, Twitter, etc., or, or games, uh, they they still are more uh, like a display ad. Uh, mm-hmm. where you eventually have to click the ad or essentially, you know, watch the ad to, uh, you know, go to the next step, which is the advertiser's platform, advertiser's website, mm-hmm. or or the page of the advertiser's app where advertiser would ask you to install the app. Uh, so that is the current scenario of ads. In Metaverse, since we are talking about a, a 3D world experience, uh, it, it makes uh, experiential marketing much, much more uh, viable. Uh, mm-hmm. As a solution, and uh, you know, ads can not uh, just be looked at as uh, you know display banners. Uh, they can be looked at as you know small uh, kind of applications itself that can you know give you uh, you know good understanding of the products from the advertisers. Right. That can mm-hmm. give you a demo of uh, let's say a car, uh, and you can just go inside the car, check out the interiors, and and you know maybe then book it uh, or book a test drive. Or you can, mm-hmm. if you're buying a home, you can actually walk inside the home. Uh, if you're buying a ticket to a destination, you can actually, uh, you know, experience that destination for some time. And mm. and it would make, uh, you know, the, the conversions that much more, uh, you know, easier because users are essentially getting some experience of how the end product is going to look like uh, right. instead of just looking at it as, uh, from a banner's perspective. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, the other... Uh, kind of point to mention or, or note here is uh, that on a mobile device or even on a desktop, uh, the real estate or the amount of area in on which you can put an ad is always limited, right? Uh, yep. Because uh, you have to show the content as well. It, it cannot be just the ad, right? Uh, uh, on, a, on a device, you can actually put up a small banner and still covers 20% of the screen. Uh, yep. Whereas uh, in a in an experience like a metaverse, it is uh, you know it's like a three sixty degree uh, real estate which is open for you, right? Mm-hmm. So so you can actually have ads which are much more uh, similar to a real world scenario, uh, like billboards for example uh, on the road if you're walking down, 
or uh, or store fronts uh, which can actually you know show, give you some demos of the products so ads uh, in itself uh, uh, can you know kind of cater to much mm. larger experiences uh, than True. they are currently doing now so so that's on the uh, you know ads front and how it can involve mm. the metaverse Mm-hmm. If we talk about uh, you know the the other uh, you know uh, aspect of monetization, which is in-app purchases. Uh, so so again, we mentioned earlier that uh, the in-app purchases uh, actually uh, happens on on games to actually buy a life or some virtual goods uh, within the games. So yep. obviously, in a in a three D world uh, scenario in a metaverse, uh, where the multiplayer multiple players uh, playing the games together there are obviously going to be much more uh, stuff that you can buy out uh, within yes. the whole experience uh, whether it's your clothes whether it's a haircut whether it's a glasses uh, you know how do you want to look and feel what kind of avatar you want to choose all of that can be actually monetized uh, through mm. in app purchases and again it kind of uh, kind of opens up uh, you know bigger much bigger uh, potential uh, in terms of what app developers can monetize from versus what yep. they are able to do on a mobile device so mm. so mm. and 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 that is the reason why uh, a lot of big tech companies are now uh, turning their focus on the metaverse because obviously there's much more scope uh, in terms of revenue in, in all these streams which are there no absolutely and uh, i was playing this game cyberpunk uh, and uh, you can see that on that game also there are uh, levels where you can upgrade yourself right you can add a lot of stuff onto your player and you of imagine course. that whole scenario uh, into a 3d world where you yourself are the avatar of uh, you know you have your own a virtual life there and you want to upgrade your maybe clothing or you want to buy a car or you want to have something else which can be totally uh, you know a, a digital form of what you already have in the real world i think those kind of monetization activities and opportunities are open for brands and developers to explore uh, in the Absolutely. metaverse uh, Absolutely. but uh, but again uh, arpit uh, for this particular uh, scenario to happen Uh, mm-hmm. there's a there has to be a learning curve and i'm sure there are some current challenges that developers must be facing and you yeah. work with a lot of developers and brands so i would love to know from you what sort of learning curve do you see happening for uh, this whole scenario to get actualized in the uh, metaverse sure sure so in terms of uh, challenges and rug uh, there actually what from from an overall perspective we see actually more challenges uh from the infrastructure and and hardware perspective to actually okay. make uh, you know this a reality versus uh, you know software or technical challenges which developers or advertisers might face right so so for example uh, if we if we talk about uh, you know the devices which are going to be used to mm. uh, consume the metaverse right so you obviously need uh, vr ar devices right which can which can uh, launch you in into the metaverse and you're ap- actually able to experience these things which we just mentioned before uh, uh, i mean so there the we we've been working on uh, you know vr devices since the 1960s right uh, uh, to to even go back into into the history mm-hmm. but even even right now uh, the devices that we have uh, i mean there's still question marks on uh, whether they're cost effective Uh, how much yep. scale you know we can do in terms of uh, you know the users because of the cost the second is uh, you know how how much time can a user use a device on a consistent basis right mm-hmm. so usually if you if you check the numbers for a tz oculus quest you would yep. see that uh, users are not able to spend uh, you know more than 60 65 minutes comfortably on a quest mm-hmm. for a for a continuous uh, you know streak of days right so so the average time uh, that people can spend on these devices also very very important if you if you have to give those experiences on a consistent and uh, and, a, and a bigger uh, you know level so so yep. that's something which i i see as a bigger challenge uh, uh, you know than actually uh, uh, you know uh, having developers uh, developers having a learning curve uh, to make these apps uh, uh, developers have been working uh, on 3d games uh, mm-hmm. for quite a some time now right uh, and and obviously i mean uh, at least from the gaming perspective i i see that there are a lot of uh, apps and games that are already available on on such devices that can mm. easily extend uh, into the whole metaverse experience 
provided that they have uh, you know enough users uh, uh, to play those games and and hence they can monetize those games yep. so so yep. i see the challenges more on the infrastructure side uh, than actually on the on the learning curve side yeah it's it's a very classic case of uh, any new technology and uh, evolution of technology uh, when it comes it takes a bit of time for uh, brands and the ecosystem to get comfortable with and uh, launch something which is uh, truly affordable like if you yeah. take the example of iPhones and then now you have companies like Realme and Xiaomi uh, giving you almost the same experience in le- less than half the price i think right. that kind of a technology is really required where you can replace uh, a headset like Oculus or a HTC Vive to really yeah. have something which is affordable and uh, i think i remember back in the days there was this Samsung VR headset that used to come for uh, yeah. 7 8000 bucks uh, where you can attach your mobile phone onto that uh, VR headset and you can experience a, a 3D world. Do you think yeah. that can be uh, the future where your mobile uh, handsets can act as uh, a medium between you and the metaverse? Uh, right. I mean, we we are actually seeing some, uh, you know, some companies working with a mobile uh, device along with a VR headset so that a lot of processing can be done on the mobile itself. Uh, and, and, you know, you can provide lighter, uh, headsets and people can actually wear them for much longer. Uh, but like you said, it would require, uh, you know, a, a drastic, uh, a change in terms mm. of a company and coming up and saying, you know, that this is something that we can, uh, provide for a much uh, lesser cost. Because even, even if you talk about the existing devices or, you know, the experiment, uh, experiments which have happened uh, previously, uh, all those have still uh, reached the scale of experiments, right? So yep. we we cannot actually say, you know, how how was it uh, when we when we actually manufactured it on scale and were we actually you know uh, able to reach the the price of it? Uh, apart from just the hardware, I I would also like to point out on the on the on the infrastructure uh, for the internet penetration mm-hmm. as well as internet speed. Right. So when we're talking about this kind of an experience, obviously it, it has to be uh, on, you know, a good bandwidth. Uh, mm-hmm. I would at least expect, uh, you know, uh, when, the, when the 5G uh, would be much, uh, uh, you know, it would be spread uh, among a lot of users. That is the time when, uh, you know, at least those users can start uh, interacting within the metaverse, uh, you know, seamlessly. Otherwise, I mean, uh, uh, even though we, we do have a, a very good, uh, you know, internet penetration and, and bandwidth right now, you still see, uh, you know, when, when we were working from home during the COVID periods, uh, there were a lot of times complaints of, you know, dropping of, of, yep. of voice or, or video or things like that, just because of the internet penetration and the connectivity, right? Mm, so mm. at least, at least in India, from the Indian perspective, I would, I would think that that is also one thing that we need to, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, keep in mind. Uh, when we are actually looking at, you know, what kind of scale uh, this can reach in the next few years. Absolutely. I agree with that because uh, even if you look at the boom of uh, the apps and and internet uh, in India was actually after Jio came into the picture. Right. When the costs of using internet really went down and the penetration started to happen at tier two, tier three levels uh, in the country. That was when we saw that. And of course, with 5G, uh, I I am hoping that this year uh, we'll see a few of the cities in India to get 5G as a a beta launch and see how it goes along with that. But you are absolutely correct. It has to be a a mix of both hardware and the ecosystem working together in order to provide that kind of uh, experience to the user. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, no matter how good your software is, uh, if the experience of uh, the user is not met, uh, is not uh, something which is out of this world and how Facebook is, you know, promoting it to be something very, very different. If that experience is not translated into real life, then the whole scenario doesn't really uh, help uh, uh, the uh, the whole uh, uh, mo- movement that is going on with right. Metaverse. Uh, right, right, so coming. Absolutely. Coming to uh, the capabilities, since we're talking about capabilities uh, of the ecosystem, of the hardware, the software, uh, I'm sure you must be working with uh, a lot of the developers and brands right now to make this happen in the next Mm -hmm. three to five years. So what sort of change are you seeing right now happening? uh, and, And how are you empowering these developers and customers? 
Right. So uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, what what Greedy Game does on a day to day basis, right, uh, our complete focus and energy is to, uh, you know, work with uh, uh, generally small and medium uh, scale app developers and game developers and help them, uh, you know, with tools, with expertise, with bandwidth, uh, you know, with, with features uh, that can make their job easier in terms mm. of, uh, you know, making more revenues from their apps and games and uh, and basically growing their business overall, right? So uh, so even in this scenario, uh, what, uh, what we uh, have an advantage is uh, essentially because we worked on the in-game advertising uh, mm. piece for, for some time in the past. In fact, that was the product which we started the company with. Mm. Uh, so we used to, uh, you know, run a lot of uh, the in-game experiential ads, uh, okay. in-game 3D ads uh, on virtual billboards, on you know, on on the pitch of the of the cricket ground or the back of the car. Uh, mm. We've we've worked with you know more than a hundred brands, uh, and uh, we've worked with you know at least 200, 250 different gaming apps, uh, where we have actually provided uh, you know this sort of an experience the end users and we were able to uh, you know help uh, game developers monetize uh, by via this uh, in game uh, or 3d advertising route right mm-hmm. so so we uh, we do have that kind of an experience uh, and based on that experience uh, obviously uh, there are two sides of, of the coin here uh, one side is the app publisher who who wants to ensure that the user is uh, is not getting interrupted with the experience mm-hmm. or the mm-hmm. ads experience is not overwhelming for the user uh, so essentially so so we we have catered to you know the publishers uh, as well and the other side is obviously the advertisers who are eventually paying you to show these ads so so they are also looking for a certain uh, kpi a certain uh, uh, you know performance uh, out of right. the ad uh, mm. which needs to be delivered in that scenario in that experience right so it it just cannot be uh, you know a good looking ad it has to do its its part as well in terms of you know engaging the user or or uh, ha- making that sale happen uh, you know down the funnel so so with that experience, uh, I mean, uh, essentially what we are trying to do is we are trying to, again, uh, you know, build that platform, which can make, uh, you know, job easy for both the advertisers and the publishers. So we we believe and we understand that, you know, the publishers and the advertisers have uh, enough of work uh, themselves to do. So the app publisher has to make an app, ensure the, you know, the, their users on the, on the app or the game and ensure the content is always engaging so that more and more users can retain. Uh, so we ensure whatever platform we make, uh, they have to do, you know, minimum uh, kind of uh, job to to get uh, onboarded to the platform so that they can just use certain APIs and and integrate this platform within their game uh, seamlessly uh, and and then uh, we keep on trying to you know capture the right metrics from the advertisers perspective uh, what we need to ensure so that they are you know willing to uh, kind of continuously uh, use this platform as as a as a platform to uh, you know get their products out uh, and and you know market their products in so so we uh, essentially like i said we work on both the sides uh, we try to take in the feedback from both the parties and and make sure the platform uh, does not require a lot of uh, onboarding a lot of learning curve for both these parties to get started Mm, absolutely. I, I like the idea where uh, you are trying to bridge uh, the gap between the advertiser uh, and the publisher and giving them a, a single ecosystem where they can work together in order to make things work. Uh, as a publisher, you want the advertiser to be on board on your system. As an advertiser, you want the maximum ROI from your ads. And at the end of the day, you want that whole experience for the user to be uh, top notch, so that they keep using your app, they keep going on to the advertisers uh, platform as well, and and the whole ROI uh, that you are planning to build really gets generated through this experience. Because at the end of the day, without experience, no matter how good your ad looks or how good your app uh, functions, it doesn't really boil down to the uh, to the results that you are uh, catering to, right? Right, that's correct. So so that's what we work on. 
Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, Arpit, before we close uh, today's episode, uh, I would love to know your closing thoughts on what the future of ads look like to you. Like, of course, we spoke about the experiential uh, part of the metaverse and how advertisers can uh, take advantage of that. But apart from this, what do you think is the future for ads in the metaverse? Right. So, I mean, uh, I uh, like if if I were to put it in, uh, let's say, you know, uh, what, how were ads perceived in uh, Web 1.0 versus uh, Web 2.0 and now Metaverse like Web 3.0, right? So, we've seen ads, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, started as a display advertising, uh, uh, you know, theme where uh, we were able to see the ads on websites in, in 1.0. And then when we moved on to Web 2.0 with all social media, it became, uh, instead of display advertising, it, it now became interactive advertising. So we can actually interact with the ads and figure uh, things out, go to the advertiser website, fill up forms, right? And now with, with Metaverse and, and the experiential advertising, it, it moves into more of a behavioral advertising where by uh, being very, very subtle in the whole ad experience, uh, in the in the world where you are putting up, uh, you know, banners and and brand placements, you can actually influence the behavior of the user uh, without actually uh, overwhelming the user with ads, right? So so I I would think that uh, advertisers will start focusing on behavioral advertising and the kind of creatives that they come up with, the kind of uh, images, ad images or experiences that they come up with would have a lot to do with how we change the behavior of the user towards uh, making it positive towards the, the advertiser than actually, you know, having demanding a sale at that same point of time. So it, that's that's what we at least believe at Creamy Game. No, absolutely golden nuggets there, Arpit. Thank you so much for sharing this. And uh, guys, if you are a game developer, if you are a publisher looking to advertise or getting, uh, you know, making your app hit the next level in terms of monetization, definitely check out greedygame.com. Also, if you want to get in touch with Arpit, uh, we'll put down his LinkedIn profile in the show notes below. So reach out to him and he'll be able to help you out with whatever queries you have with respect to Greedy Game, your apps or your advertising. So with that, Arpit, you have been an absolute pleasure to speak with. I enjoyed a lot and I'm sure the audience would have gained great insights from this episode today. Thank you so much. And I hope to get you back on the show again in the future to talk more about monetization apps and how the Web3 world is going on. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Anurag. It was a pleasure to be on the show and hopefully people would have uh, got some value out of this, this conversation. So that wraps it up for today, folks. If you liked the episode, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends and let's go viral. Remember, our weekly podcast features episodes on personal growth, mental health, relationships, business and entrepreneurship, and health and fitness. We would love to have Arpit on the show again in the future to talk more about the metaverse and how app monetization is going to change in the future. So if you haven't yet done so, hit that subscribe button and go check out our website at sociallydesi.com. And as always, before I sign off, remember, life is black and white and everything in between.